dicks and big swinging Real estate development is full of extreme alpha males and big risk takers, pretty much the complete opposite of me. Looking back at 2020's most over-the-top real estate projects, it's hard not to notice Niall Niami, king of the Los Angeles mega mansion. In 2020, he completed the most ridiculous 100,000 square foot Bel Air mansion on spec, and then he slapped a half billion dollar price tag on it, effectively slapping everyone with his ginormous ball sack. If it fetches that price, it'd be the most expensive home in the country. So how did he get into the bricks and sticks, and then enlarge his big swinging <laughs> Niall had pretty modest beginnings as the son of a single mom in LA, and he began his career in Hollywood working on special effects makeup. He later launched his own production company and produced 15 B-movies like Galaxis, Point Blank, and The Patriot. Not the good one. As his production company grew, he was inspired to get into house flipping from an infomercial and started by buying cheap homes in LA after the Northridge earthquake in 1994. Take note, noobs, because house flipping is how a lot of developers get started. House flipping went well for him and he gradually did more and more expensive homes. By the 2010s, he started building contemporary homes in some of LA's priciest neighborhoods. As his houses got more expensive, he ran into some difficulties getting financing for them, but he proved that he was onto something in 2012 with the sale of an $18 million, 8,000 square foot mansion to the Winklevoss twins. You know, the ones who first had the idea for Facebook. From there, his growth curve went vertical, and Niall snowballed his gains by pairing up with architect Paul McLean to build increasingly expensive mega mansions for the ultra-rich. And he marketed them with Instagram, girls, fast cars, and parties! The ballsiest part of all this is that he built most of these homes on spec, meaning that he didn't have a buyer lined up. He just rolled the dice on whether buyers would bite, and bite they did. In 2014, he sold a Holmby Hills mansion to P. Diddy for $39 million. He bought it earlier for $14 million and tore it down to build a 17,000 square foot monster with 8 bedrooms and 19 bathrooms. Amenities included things like a 35 seat theater, private salon, and a pool and grotto connected via an underwater tunnel. In 2016, he sold another flip for $39 million to billionaire founder of Vista Equity Partners, Brian Sheff. This one was a teardown of an existing Beverly Hills mansion that he bought for $7 million and turned into a 14,000 square foot single story pad with an infinity pool and panoramic views over LA. In 2017, Floyd Mayweather bought another of Niall's Beverly Hills mansions for $26 million. But success breeds competition, and the market soon became flooded with mega mansions for the super rich. But what does a big swinging dick do when other swinging dicks challenge their alpha status? They grow bigger. So Niall started entering rarefied air. In 2017, he announced that his 20,500 square foot development dubbed the Opus, not the one in Dubai that I just did a video on, was priced at a record $100 million. And tapping into his previous career, he made an equally over the top marketing video. It showcases all his signature Mega Mansion elements, but amped to 11. Half naked girls, a fountain, a bar attended by a girl who can't see, a really fancy wine cellar with girls, an infinity pool with girls, a girl spraying champagne, a car museum with girls, and a really awkward dinner party without food and girls toasting with empty champagne glasses, probably because she sprayed all the champagne out before. The crazy thing is that the Opus is like a small guest house compared to the one, the Giga Mansion that Niall completed in 2020 that earned him our big swinging dick title. The one sits atop a hill in Bel Air and at 100,000 square feet, it's the biggest home for as far as the eye can see. With that much square footage, Niall might have run out of ideas for stuff to put in, but he certainly squeezed in a lot. <sighs> 20 bedrooms, 30 bathrooms, 2 kitchens, a tennis court, not just one infinity pool, but a network of at least 5 of them that form a moat, waterfalls, a gym and a spa the size of an equinox, a 2 story library, a 2 story wine room, a cigar room, a jellyfish tank room, actually he scratched this one when he discovered it cost a million bucks, a 6 lane bowling alley, a 32 seat movie theater, and a car museum with a capacity for 30 cars. Whew. The one took seven years to complete as Niall tinkered with getting all the details right while negotiating with banks to let him keep going. He bought the property in 2012 for 28 million and he accumulated 82 million dollars in debt to complete it. So it's fittingly a make or break deal for Niami because he slapped a 500 million dollar price tag on it. With the construction delays to date and some other troubles he had with selling Opus, he's really playing chicken with a dead clock. But if just one billionaire out there snatches this up at even half the price, he'll undoubtedly continue building and secure his title as the biggest swinging mega mansion developing dick out there. Know any other big swinging dick developers out there that are doing some really cool projects in 2021? Let us know in the comments. Stay curious, noobs.